You bet. Yeah, so I am ready? Okay. I am Todd Westra and I uh I have owned several businesses throughout my my life, but honestly it all reverts back to um sales. Uh I have every business that I've done, I've generally been my top producer even when I have a good healthy sales staff. I just love the art of sales. I love the joy of giving customers what they want. And so it makes me a decent founder, but a better, I don't know. I just love, I love crafting product for people and so making them happy. So um, that is what my background is. Um, I currently am venturing off to do a whole consulting gig and it's something new I've never done before. So I'm actually really eager to learn how you guys are pitching B2B and how you're hitting your targets. And so that's why I've been so attracted to the sales community on LinkedIn is I just, I think there's a lot of great things to learn from a lot of great people. And um, a lot of my work's been B2C and um, other stuff like that. So it's been, it's been a fun transition. Awesome. Steve. Hey. Thanks, Francois. Thanks, Amy. So Steve Pronishin, uh, enterprise sales executive. And my background has been primarily in telecom expense management and managed mobility services. So helping uh, organizations across all industry verticals manage and reduce their telecom expenses. Um, that's historically where, my, <coughs> uh, where I've been focused. Um, but right now, currently in the market, looking for new opportunities. <laughs> so happy to, to be here with everybody and look forward to helping out Rosalind today. Awesome. Uh, Amy. Yeah, because like Patty D just took off. Um, okay, well, we have Coach Todd. We have Steve who's on the market. So everyone out there that's watching this, hook this guy up. He's amazing. Um, but I'm Amy Quick. Um, I am the new territory account manager at Fortinet for the Southeast District. So Atlanta, Georgia, Orlando, Florida, you know, I'm coming for you guys. Um, <laughs> I'm super excited to get to work in the SMB space. Um, it's a new space for me. Um, I've sold in it before, um, but I've been enterprise for the last few years. So I'm really, really excited to kind of get down in the trenches and really um, learn, a, learn a little bit of a faster paced process and get to work. So you hackers out there, don't hack me, please. <laughs> hackers beware. Patrick, <laughs> Patrick we, love, we, we know you, but we, we want to hear more about you. <laughs> I don't think you do. <laughs> anyway, yeah, Patrick Downs. You can call me Patty Ice, Patty with an I, obviously, like Natty. And um, we, we talked about this last time, but I work at Fortnite. I started working there after uh, Amy went to Fortnite. And uh, I actually, all jokes aside, I work at PandaDoc. Um, I was a child star in my youth, and I'm an aspiring class clown. And uh, I'm looking forward to helping you guys out today. Awesome, Tabitha. Try and beat that. It's not fair. <laughs> It's not fair, you guys. <laughs> I am Tabitha Cavanaugh, aka Tab the Recruiter. So, hey, Steve, we'll have a chat later. Um, I am the VP of Talent Strategy over at Something New, which is a, a fancy way of, of calling me a recruiter. But basically, we recruit a bit differently. I help people with talent acquisition, onboarding, retention, all things people over everything. Beauty. All right, I'll give a quick overview and then it's over to you, Rosalind. Uh, I'm Francois Bordeaux. I work for Encore Business Solutions. I've been selling in the mid and enterprise uh, space uh, with Microsoft partners for over 10 years. So that's a space uh, I know well. Uh, Rosalind, let us know how we can help you and, and what you want to practice today and uh, let's get better. Yeah, great. Well, um, I am Rosalind Edwards. I'm with NSA Inc. Uh, I've recently started there back in January. Uh, got my initial training going and then pandemic hit. So my almost two year old son was home with me for seven weeks, all while I was trying to learn a new job. Um, so that was, that was interesting, but it was really also fun to spend time with him at such a young age because they're learning so much and just, it was just awesome to interact with him um, that often. Um, but daycare recently opened three weeks ago. So I'm back grinding and uh, I'm just trying to perfect kind of my presentation. And I used to work in payment processing. So it was a lot of B2C. Um, now I'm in the B2B space where I'm trying to create 
a relationship with other processors, ISOs, ISVs, basically uh, companies that provide merchant accounts to e-commerce businesses. Um, so NS8 is a comprehensive fraud prevention platform. So we combine behavior analytics, real-time scoring, and then global monitoring to help businesses minimize risk. So what that means is if you have an online business, the merchant, I'm sorry, the cardholder will go onto the, biz, the website and we start collecting data from about you right away. Um, essentially, we're gonna provide a score from zero to a thousand about that cardholder. Um, the higher the score, the better we think they are. Um, if they're scoring low, more than likely they're like a fraud or a bot trying to do a fraudulent sale or get a free product out of you. So the merchant can put parameters onto the site and if it scores be before uh, below like a 300, then we would not have that transaction go through. We would assume that it's a fraudulent sale or a bad sale um, that the cardholder probably has a record of doing a lot of chargebacks, thus making them not a very good candidate. And then anything between like, let's say three and 600, we'd wanna verify that transaction um, hey, did you make this sale? We just want to make sure. Uh, yes, I did. Okay, enter this code and we'll go ahead and complete the transaction. So there's a two-step verification. And then anything above 600, the sale is going to go through like normal. So I guess what I'm looking for help with is how to initially start the conversation with the processors, ISOs, ISVs that I connect with on LinkedIn. Um, I know that probably, I've, I've read a lot about this, I've spoken with people about this, and um, you know they, they want you to interact with their posts, they want you to comment, to like, and to do all that stuff. So I've been, I've been doing that, um, and then you know it's slowly working, but I am usually the one that's reaching out to these people to connect with them. Um, it's usually not them connecting with me. So I always send a little note. And right now I've just been saying kind of like, hey, how, how you doing? I hope you and your family are, are healthy and well right now during these you know, crazy times. Um, but I would say 60% of the time people aren't even responding back with a thank you or, you know, you too or anything like that. There's just not a lot of like human connection there. So um so Rose, Rosalind, one real quick question, uh, just for context, so we can kind of understand the, I don't, I don't want to say the use case, but can you help us understand, like right now, do you have a specific territory? Are you doing only outbound? Are you dealing with inbound? And then, and then are you saying like of those prospects, you're now trying to, you know, get in front of them? So NS8 is a uh, nationwide company. We have offices in Melbourne, Australia. We have um, offices in... Miami. Um, we have another office in, um, oh, I can't remember, somewhere in the very east. And um, so my product does work nationwide, and my job is to create the white label opportunity or partnership. So whether that's with a company in the U.S. or outside, um, you know, if it is somebody outside of the States, I probably will refer them to people that work over there. Um, but it's just all about creating that connection and, and, you know, the opportunity to present my product. Because I think a lot of times when they see the demo, which is usually, so step one would be chat with them a little bit, try to get them on a phone call, talk a little bit about um, why this product would benefit them, ask them some questions on if they're having trouble with fraud or a lot of chargebacks with their merchants. And then if it all makes sense, then we'd wanna hop on a demo. And then I have a team that does the demo for them. And a lot of times once they see the demo, they understand the value, but it's just creating that initial contact. So I think that's just what I'm- Can I chime in here? Cause I'm <clears throat> uncomfortably familiar with what she does and what her product <laughs> solves. Um, there is, you, here's the thing, Rosalind, you need to really know the pain point of your client on this because the pain point absolutely sucks. It's a business killer. In fact, it killed my last business. Um, and that is chargebacks mm -hmm. and the amount of fraudulent charges on, on internet traffic and, and e-commerce websites where people are selling a product. It's considered high risk because there's a card not present. And so every ISO 
and every merchant uh, bank broker who's providing merchant services to people absolutely hates the fact that they go work hard to find their clients, which are people like my clients used to be. I used to have a call center and I do customer service for all these people. And so, so I, I understand intimately the problem that you're solving because it's cost me hundreds of thousands of dollars and absolutely drove me nuts. And so what you need to do is, is really think about, okay, your clients are the guys getting the guys who need merchant accounts, right? And their headache is put yourself in their sales position for just a minute. They're trying to sell to people the fact that they can bring merchant banking to them, right? Mm -hmm. And when their merchant account gets nixed because of excessive chargebacks or just because the merchant bank decides to cut them off because they say they're not qualified need to cut anymore, X amount yeah. of high risk, mm -hmm. you have a huge problem you're going to solve. I mean, huge problem you're going to solve. And, and I, for one, would probably sign up for your service immediately because of the situation I was in where my clients were losing merchant accounts and then they couldn't pay their customer service bills. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I killed a lot of jobs because of that. And, and so you need to think of, think of your client that you're selling to and who they're selling to, because their pain point is I don't want to have to go through 20 applications for this guy again, because their merchant account got nixed because they had chargebacks. So yeah. once you once you feel their pain points, you come in as the beautiful rose of Rosalind and you can <laughs> take care of that problem. And that's what my messaging would be 100% of the time on LinkedIn. Don't ask them about their family. Don't ask them about that. Just say, hey, how many merchant accounts have you lost this quarter? How many reapplications have you had to do for this person you know what so I mean? just go for it right away don't don't try oh. and do the little build report thing because i hear no. so many different things like do you build report first do you try and talk with them or hey i have a solution for the challenge that you're having right now you know would you do you have a couple minutes could, to talk more about could it? i could i tell you someone who does an excellent job who's in an interesting niche like you who it, it, dana mantilia i don't know if you guys know her at all but she is she does ID security and like corporate ID theft protection type stuff. And her messages are absolutely hilarious and perfect. They're so laser focused all the time. Everybody knows what she does. You know what I mean? Like NS8, I don't know what that does, but I now know the pain point. And so you could talk all day about ways that people fraudulently charge on, a, on an online, you know, purchase or ways that people, I mean, did you know on the black market that, that people are buying lists of card on file, uh, lead, lead lists. Like yeah. I've had those in my inbox before. And I'm like, who just sent me 10,000 credit card numbers? Like <laughs> all I wanted was a phone number list. I didn't want there. like those lists exist and it scares the crap out of people. And so as a merchant who's trying to sell product, the last thing they want to know is that their merchant account just got shut down because some idiot was charging fraudulent charges. And usually it's the traffic guys generating the fraudulent charges on their, on their site because they want to get the credit for the uh, CPA. Yeah, so to add to that point, um, one of NSA's other product is advertising fraud. So we can give you real-time yeah. data on if- it's magic. Yeah, uh, on if this advertising campaign is actually bringing high scoring clients to the website or if you they're sending bot and fraud flow. traffic. Yeah. You have an endless content flow right now of ideas that I'm thinking in my head of examples you could talk about of different fraudulent examples. And you could just hit that. You could have 20 posts a day and never run out of ideas of content for that. Yeah. So I guess just more talk about the pain points of, of, losing these merchants and and how i can help you keep them longer so the merchant a is making their money and b you're making the residual from that merchant and you're not having to shop them around because it takes a long time to get a merchant approved Sucks. a long yeah. time <laughs> yeah okay i like that that's obviously a great way to think about it and i'm not sure why my brain didn't think that before i think i was just so much on 
taking care of my son and just everything that's going on in the world right now, it's hard for my brain to get bigger and, and explore other ways of, of thinking about things right now. I guarantee We're Amy's all kind of going on, through it. Amy's probably got some excellent feedback because she's going through this transition to the Hackerville and I'm, I'm eager to hear what she's, uh, she's learning, how she's doing it. Yeah. So it, what's is um, I think, you know, vanilla is not going to get you attention. Uh, if you're, if you're liking content and, and, you know, people's content and, and, and engaging with them, you've got to do something that's going to set you apart and a little bit of shock, you know, shock and awe and like, you know, being kind of random and um, in, in your, in their face a little bit, you know, um, but still keeping your personality is going to help. So when you're, when you're thinking about how you're engaging on content and things like that, just be yourself. Like there's really no rhyme or reason for that. You just say what you want to say, comment, move on. Um, I can tell you that you're going to get more organic inbound connections from the content that you put out. So every yeah. post like mix in, um, you know, some, just some personal stuff talking about your son and that experience with COVID-19, whatever you want personal side. But when you post about relevant, you know, uh, content related to NSA or NSA and, and what you're doing in the pain points, make it like super, super flash and awe and scary. And so one of the things I'm doing for Fortinet is with the cybersecurity world is, I mean, I mean, everyone knows there's hacking. Everyone knows there's like a million tools out there to, you know, Forta gates. And I mean, there's like Forta everything. Right. But what I think is cool is keying in on like vectors and like all these different new hacks. And so I'm planning to put out weekly content on just some crazy stuff that's out there. And most of my network um, are full. And I mean, I, I have cybersecurity that I'm growing, right? Um, but because my network is full of people that are gonna engage with me and they're gonna boost my content, all those cybersecurity people are with me and already, and I haven't even posted anything. I think, you know, I posted like a Wonder Woman meme. So um, the, the shock and awe is definitely gonna help driving in on those pain points finding one good relevant point to, to, to put out a post on and just really like structure the post really well, make it really engaging. Um, and don't be afraid to kind of put yourself out there and be a little combative even, you know, and challenge these customers with how much money they're going to lose, how much pain they're going to affect the end user. And, you know, the whole trickle down effect that Todd was talking about, you can create content around that so that every week, or every day you're putting out some sort of relevant content that's related to these pain points that you're addressing. And then that can translate into your messaging when you're sending those connections and those connection requests. Um, use voice messaging, you know, like if you got that on your phone, use the hell out of that because you can put in there really quick, like, you know, a blurb about you, what pain you're solving for your customer, drop your number. Um, and then do not talk about COVID-19 in your messaging. Like, don't ask them how they're handling it or anything, because I can tell you, I probably have 300 messages in my inbox now that start out with, hey, how are you handling this current climate and everything going on there? And I'm just like, <laughs> well, <laughs> I've repeated the same story like five, you know, 20 times all, you know. In, Do you in think like that um, video posts or written posts are better or a combination of both? I think a combo. I mean, I don't do hardly any video, um, but I'm, I'm going to start. I'm probably going to do one a week. Um, so I think it's a combo. I think it's whatever you're comfortable with, um, honestly. And I think Jake Dunlap actually posted something about how uh, video content doesn't necessarily perform any better than just typical, you know, written text. So um, it as long as it's relevant. Really jump in there too, if you want. Um, yeah. So like written content is, I think that performs the best, but when you mix in the video, you mix in the images, you mix in other things, then people get to know your personality and that's how you organically grow your account. So people are going to see your video and be like, oh, I really like her personality or I like her presentation or however you, you know, and that's how people really are going to get to know you because otherwise we just have these little itty bitty pictures on LinkedIn and that's, that's about it, you know? 
Um, and I was going to say that about the voice messaging too, you know, even still, so voice messaging has been around since 2018 on LinkedIn. You can only do it on mobile and I can walk you through that if you need help after this call. But I still get messages from people every time I send a voice memo, they're like, oh my gosh, this is, you're the first person to send me a voice memo. And so not only are you adding value immediately because you're showing them about a new feature that they didn't know about but you're also doing something different and showing up differently. And if you want to take it a step further, once you get a little bit more comfortable or just go for it and you're going to get comfortable quickly is do a video message, you know, um, and start out with like a staggering statistic or number that is going to be, you're going to be like, Whoa, I didn't know that, but that could happen to me. And that's scary as hell for my business. So not to, not to do like the fear tactics or marketing, but I mean, that's, that's the world you you live in and the the people that you want to surround yourself with so yeah thank you yeah yeah absolutely and you know piggybacking on what what tab said over there and sort of echoing what amy mentioned is that you want to do something that stands out right and pe- people are busy so it sounds like you're doing a good job getting them to connect with you but now you know doing that small chit chat building rapport and again, you don't, unless you have something to really talk about with them, they don't have time for it. Like I'll get messages like, Hey, Hey, how are you? Like I got a million things going on. I can't take time out to say I'm doing well. How are you? Just cause we know it's not going to go anywhere. Right. So my suggestion would be is, you know, and, and I just actually just took a training from, uh, from the man, Morgan Ingram <laughs> on video messaging because you know, 1% of people on LinkedIn uh, are creating content. And even less than them are, are doing video and using videos in their messages. So if you got a video message in your inbox, it's already got a visual on it. So someone's going to click on it and they'll say, whoa, what is this? And that's the way that you're able to do a quick, you know, start with like a quick hand up to wave. So it looks polite. And then 10 seconds, just I noticed make something relevant in their world. You could open it up with that and then give a 30 second quick value prop and then end it with a 10 second call to action. That's going to be frictionless. And basically, you know, open to learning more, you know, nothing hard. It's going to make them much more likely to respond to that. And it keeps it, it keeps it open. Um, and again, you could sprinkle these into your, your outreach cadence with your emails as well, because you got to cut through that noise on their inbox. And yeah. a thing too is, you know, the first one that you send, just send a straight, you know, text email because you want to make sure you get through the firewall. And then after that, once you're through, now you can incorporate the video in there and, you know, you can use different types of tools like Vidyard, Loom, Drift, you know, there's a bunch of great products out there and there's, there's free versions for individual seats. So it's not going to cost you anything. And this is how you're going to differentiate yourself and and stand out. And you're going to get, again, too, what I would say is check the people's profiles when they are connecting with you and go to the recent activity because, they but might I not do. even if, if they're not posting and, and are they are a lot of them are they creating content or are they not really active on, on LinkedIn? What are what are you seeing from the types of personas that you're connecting with? Um, well, half of them are very active, and the other half haven't had any activity or not even any liking or commenting on anything, let alone not posting anything themselves. So, yeah, I mean that's kind of the challenge is is how do you interact with them if they're not being interactive themselves? Oh. Exactly. So, I mean, first off, that's great that 50% of them are really active because you can still also have that sort of nurturing campaign where you now are engaging on their content, liking it, commenting on it. So you get that visibility for yourself. So my suggestion would be is for the folks that are active on LinkedIn, right? Engage with their, their posts for about two weeks. So that way you're there to start seeing your face, see your name, and then you can drop them that message and the ones that you notice where they're not active, right? Just connect with them, give it a day or two. So you're not doing the connect and pitch, <laughs> you know, and then drop that video in there. And even if they don't respond, then you'll still have the connection. You'll be much less likely to have them unconnect with you because you went with a connect and pitch and when timing might be better or when they, you know, change vendors, then they'll, they may be able to remember your name and still have that connection on LinkedIn there. So that would be, be my two cents. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Patrick, you're the, the quiet one. That means you've been uh, you've been thinking something really the wheels are turning. <laughs> exotic or or you know. No, I don't have any exotic thoughts typically. <laughs> I, I've just been taking this all in. Um, I guess my question for you, Rosalind, is like what what is the number one thing you're looking to improve? 
Um, I, I think it's, it's the way that I interact with people, um, is being better at, at being noticed. Better at being noticed. <laughs> I feel like that way my, my wife normally, so like I, I completely get that. Um, <laughs> at, at what level do you feel right now as far as confidence, like if we had like a, a confidence scale zero to 10 on your ability to get noticed? I mean, I'm, I'm happy to chat, go on video, do anything. I mean, I did this, you know, I, I'm, yeah. I'm not scared. I'm not scared to, to speak with people. Um, just like person, I'm, I'm almost six foot tall. I have nice. these big eyes. I've always been quote unquote noticed my whole life, but it's hard to be noticed on a platform, on an online platform when you can't like see me and, and hear me, you know, hear me talk to you and smile and stuff like that. So the video actually is a great way to do that because you can actually see who I am and my personality and then also touch on those points of, you know, why we should be connected and have a more detailed conversation. Mm. So. And so when you're using these platforms, is it only for you to sell or is it more you're looking to build relationships in general? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, the way that I got this job was from somebody that I met at a convention years ago and we have always been connected on LinkedIn and always kind of helped each other out. And he brought me over to NSA because we had that relationship and that connection and continued it through LinkedIn. So not only am I looking obviously to do business with people, but just be connected in, in the community because you never know when you need to have people to rely on and be connected to. Yeah. And I'll, I'll send you something after I actually did a training internally on how to use LinkedIn as a salesperson and how to build your brand in general. And I, I can share it with the whole group. Um, and it might be helpful just as far as like how to structure what your brand actually is. Um, the kind of audience you're going after and how you should link that to your ICP, like the kind of posts you should make, the, how, the way the algorithm works and, and that kind of thing. I can send it over. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. It, it's yeah. just learning more about, I think the, the algorithm and the flow of LinkedIn and, and how you to best utilize it. Cause I mean, there was a while where I was posting a video a week. Um, I haven't done that in a while just cause I fell off of it, I should get back on. But I was posting, you know, a video a week or so, but it was mostly talking about my personal life, um, my son and, and what we were dealing with and going through with COVID. But I think that ship has sailed. Um, people aren't really interested in hearing about that anymore. It's been- They're, like, they're ready 12, to get back to work. Like we're ready no. to yeah. normalize. Yeah. <laughs> but I think, I think one thing I wanted to ask is, outside of LinkedIn, what is, what is the process of, of um, converting you know, lead generation or, or marketing kind of nurture leads into actual uh, discovery calls and then demos. I mean, is, is the primary driving factor LinkedIn or is it, I mean, do you guys have lead lists that you call or is there any other method of like bringing that pipeline activity in? Because you may find that if not, then some of those other avenues cold, traditional cold calling, you know, getting yourself some scripts or getting yourself a, a database service like a Zoom info um, to, to kind of curate lists of your prime target audience and then actually calling and traditional emailing. So are you doing any of that as well? And, and what, is, what does that kind of process look like? Um, the main way I am finding people right now is LinkedIn because so far that has worked for me. I just am looking to have more of the people that I connect you know, want to speak with me. Obviously there's goals that everybody has to reach per quarter, per year, stuff like that. So um, I think I'm refocused on, on hitting those goals recently, but we do have ETEL Insights. We do have Sales Loft. We do have um, Ikata where we can look people up. It used to be White Pages Pro. So we have a lot of tools that we can use, but uh, I feel like some of the tools that are offered to me are more B to C. Um, they're better yeah. utilized for B2C relationships and not B2B relationships. I can tell you right now, I think that if you rolled in some traditional cold calling style outbound prospecting into this equation, you're going to, one, I think you're going to get a little bit more confidence on your messaging in general um, and in your conversations that are going to pop up organically kind of through your content curation and the video messaging and stuff on LinkedIn. 
Um, but also, I mean, you could you take 30 minutes in a day to crank out 20 calls? Oh yeah, I don't yeah. mind cold calling. That's yeah. what I did all day every day at the last job. Yeah, um, I'm ha happy to pull that in. You know, I, I it'll break up your day too, because <laughs> I'm sure at some point, like you're like, man, I sent like 300 connects today, and like you know, got two people to respond or what, you know, and none of those converted into meetings. But if you roll in some other types of prospecting, like you know, combo it right, some emails, some phone calls, LinkedIn, and you kind of stagger those. So like, let's say on a day, like you, you call Sally. Okay. You leave her a voicemail saying, Hey, Sally, I'm going to send you an email with some information um, about, you know, NS8 and what we're doing to help customers with X. Oh, by the name, my, my name is, you know, Rosalind and here's my number. Um, but you'll see that email shortly. Boom. Send her an email, hit her on LinkedIn immediately following that. Like just connect with her. Don't do anything else. But those boom, 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 my house is falling apart right now. Like <laughs> my kids are like, Rah! um, <laughs> That's how it goes. but if you, I know, welcome, <laughs> see, you get it. Um, <laughs> but the combo prospecting stuff is going to, I think it's going to work really well for you because it's going to be like pinging people. Like Justin was just talking about it with Patrick, right? It's like the, the effect that it has is you're, it doesn't take that much extra effort for you to kind of build a little email template have that keyed off ready to go. So all you have to do is like, you know, input a name, change maybe the company name or whatever, send the, do the call, leave the voicemail, send the email, ping them on LinkedIn, move on. So it takes about maybe um, three to four minutes per lead or something along those lines. But I think you're going to get a dramatically higher number of meetings booked as a result, because you're not just going on LinkedIn where, you know, I can tell you right now, I have, I don't even know how many emails unread in my inbox, you know, tons. Um, and so you're going to get lost. And as they're pinging in, you're dropping down the line. And at some point they either have to work through those and, or they just go through and delete them. So, you know, you run that risk with LinkedIn too. So I think if you roll in some other prospecting methods, you're going to find a hell of a lot more success. And what you're doing on LinkedIn is going to pay off in dividends. Yeah, that totally makes sense. It's like, I know all of this stuff. It's just, I need the reminder and it's like, I need to, yeah, it's, thank you for reminding me to do that. You know, it's. And I would <laughs> say, Rosalind, I mean, I'm looking at your LinkedIn profile right now. And I'm God, we can't hear you very well. Speak, the person, speak up. Oh, speak up. Is that better? Yeah, that's hey. better. Okay, sorry. So I'm looking at your LinkedIn profile right now and you've got like, nine plus years as the person that you're prospecting right now. Like, you know what your pain point is, but I, I'm just telling you right now, like um, you're selling a B2B who's also selling a B2B. So you're B2B2B to B2B selling. And so you, you know each of these parts, right? I mean, you know the pain of losing a merchant account right during a ramp up of a, of a new promo you're doing. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm just, I'm telling you, I mean, you've got content ideas for years uh, it, in just coming up with reasons why people lose a merchant account and your, your solution NSA solves that, but I don't see like in your, on your banner, I don't see anything that would tell me what NS8 is, what you do, um, your, your title, your description, channel sales manager at NS8 Inc. I, I don't, I don't, still don't know what you do. And then your about section, it doesn't solve my problem. I don't know what problem you're solving yet. And I'm looking all at, at all your stuff on there. I have no idea what problem you're solving with NS8. And, and if I, you know, even your background image on your, on your, zoom i keep your merchant accounts up <laughs> like i solve chargeback issues i keep legit buyers on your page you know like that says volumes to me whereas right now i'm looking at you going okay who's this girl that just reached out to me i i have no idea she's from california she's pretty okay i don't know how she's gonna help me you know what i mean and so you've got to be like all over the place. I keep merchant accounts active. High risk sucks, doesn't it? I got your back. You know what I mean? Okay. I mean, that's, that's like, 
that's speaking to me. And, and I'm telling you right now that you're targeting ISOs. Yes. You're targeting people setting up merchant accounts. Yes. But I mean, they don't know what that that's yeah. Well that, and what percentage of people on LinkedIn sell a product online? A large percentage have e-commerce transactions going on, right? Everyone's dealing with the pain and, and to have anti-fraud stuff in place. I mean, they just seem to know where to get it. I wouldn't know where right. to get it right now. Yeah. And then, and, 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 okay. I need to fix that then too. I need to <laughs> clean it good, up. Good you point. It. You and I need to have a separate conversation, Todd. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll go ahead, Tab. I was just going to say confused buyers never buy. So like it just the, piggyback what he said. I mean, people are not going to search and search and search to figure out what NS8 is. They don't yeah. care. So unless you give them a reason, like he said, put one of those little blurbs. I mean, I don't come from that world, so I can't speak the language like the way you guys are, but um, that one of those tiny little blurbs on a banner image on the side and like a little bit of a change to your, your headline, and that's going to make you pop. And I'm telling you, people look at that stuff. That headline is like you need to maximize that real estate because people are looking there and they will connect with you just because of that. And if you look at my headline and it's not perfect, but if you look at mine, I include a little bit of everything. I've got like my professional side. I've got a Bible verse in there. I've got that I'm a cancer survivor. So I've got all these different types of people that it's not just, you know, VPs of sales that I'm attracting. It's cancer survivors. It's people that believe in God. It's, you know what I mean? So it's all of these different things. So don't be afraid to pull all that in and let people know who you are because that's just going to attract more attention to your page. Yeah. What I was going to Thank piggyback you. on, on what uh, Todd was saying there really quickly is I had a look at your profile as well. And I think, you know, uh, Todd gave you lots of great ideas in terms of areas of improvement. And, you know, Steven was talking about all those great statistics. There's 500 million people, you know, 1% aren't active, but to tab at this point, right? 500 million people, man, like you, you've got like a sliver of time when they they're scrolling through. And if your profile doesn't really, tell them how you can help them. They're just going to keep going. Keep and scrolling. Mm -hmm. The other thing to, to Todd's point, right? Um, like I looked at a few of your posts and this is my personal opinion. I'm happy to hear everyone else's thoughts, but I think like even in my area, um, you know, I post on sales, I post on some personal things and then I post on some issues that are specific to kind of the area I sell in, but I keep it very generic. I don't, I don't want to sell like too hard. So like, you know, I, I see you talking about the problem you solve, but I think as, as soon as you started with like, NS8 does this, then it feels like a commercial. Yeah. Versus here's a problem we solve. Like, you know, Todd gave you lots of great nuggets there. Like here's a ton of pain you solve. I don't think that like, just, just you want people to tune into you because you're just like telling them about problems you solve, problems you solve. But if you started off with like, Hey, NS8 can do this. I think right away, people's kind of guard goes up and they go, Oh man, like this sounds like a billboard. That's, yeah. That's my opinion. Uh, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And that's Use a great point. Hashtags. <laughs> Yeah. I have to throw that in there. Like use a hashtag that you can stick to. And if it's not a specific, like mine's tab the recruiter, hashtag tab the recruiter. People know me by that. It goes along with what I do for my profession. Um, and I use other applicable hashtags, you know, sales, sales recruitment, all these different, exactly. Hashtag five on Friday, you know, you just <laughs> tie yourself to a specific hashtag and then don't be afraid, like go through your feed, search hashtags that that apply to your business and the people like think about people in your business and what keywords they might be using and start searching those. And then you're going to find the other people on LinkedIn that are using those things. And then you can look at each one and see how each one is performing in terms of how many followers it has. You know, if it has a lot of followers, it might be good to jump on with that a little bit, but then also don't be afraid to, you know, pull in your own thing and, and build that as part of your personal brand. So people can follow that and, and just, be able to see your content then whenever you post it and use it every single time. Okay. Yeah. 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 I don't really understand the hashtag thing, but that makes sense because I didn't know that people actually search has hashtags. People search, people follow, and it's definitely helpful. So I'll just go in and search and think about, okay, what are VP of sales searching and thinking about? And I'll go in and start looking at that. Then I'll find content. I'll find new people. You know what I mean? And it's a whole new, it's like a whole new world that you can, a rabbit hole you can go down and, and just start looking and, and seeing what, what you think makes sense for you. Okay. Thank you. 
Yeah. yeah. And to, uh, to Francois's point, you know, when you're putting out content that's specifically around NS8, you know, one of the ways that you could position it so it doesn't come off as, you know, so as like an infomercial is basically to tell a story, right? So start out with that, that catchy headline that's going to make people want to click that see more. And then you just go through an actual story and they could be, right, your case studies for client stories. You know, this is what happened. And Amy said the quick, you know, dazzle them and <laughs> make it really stand out. And then they'll go through and they're reading the story. So even if I, even if I have no need for NS8, now I'm still getting entertained by the content you're putting out. So when you put something out again, I'm going to be more inclined to click that see more. And that's going to do two things for you, right? One, it's going to help you build that brand awareness for NS8 and the products and problems that your company solves. But also from a personal perspective, now you're going to help build out your own personal brand. So, you know, if you stay at NS8 for your entire rest of your career, that's great. Or if you go somewhere else, you now still have a following that people that enjoy the content that you're putting out there because, you know, you want to be able to use it to help, um, right, to help drive new business for you and for your company. But at the same time, at the end of the day, this is, it's your personal LinkedIn page. And I think a lot of folks forget that and they get so focused on let me just brand everything with my company and and all you are is like am i just another number on sap putting sap stuff out there or yeah. you know who's steve pronition in my about me section put some personality in there right put some about your kids some hobbies some of your interests this way it helps add that connection and you can start building that rapport by putting yourself out there and giving a snapshot of what who rosalyn is what she cares about and sort of just other areas of interest i think that's a a thing that a lot of people just they there's an oversight there and it's just strictly this is what I do for the company and you're much that's a part of who you are but you're right. much more than that right you want to give that holistic picture of who you are as a person yeah and use that to your advantage plus. to build your network too like use your network like go, like talk to people that you know and say hey do you have anyone you can introduce me to you know yeah. and uh, I mean like tab and I we were just talking about it this morning like how crazy it is to build a network. And I mean, I know everyone on here is kind of tapped into like their own network and where they all intermingle. But I, I guarantee you that anyone on this call could probably point you to a decision maker at an organization that would buy your product. So use that too. Um, you know, you start developing street cred for yourself as a person. I mean, you're well smoking, you know, like Todd said, you're beautiful. You've got like that personality and I can tell like you, you'd be a great person to have a conversation with. And you know, that that's going to get you a lot further in the sales world than just being able to spout like stats and talking about NSA and stuff like that. That's kind of like secondary almost and like drive with you and the value you bring and expand on those networks and stuff. And then sprinkle in, you know, the NSA stuff and the pain points and the problems and create content around that. Um, it's kind of, it's like a long game. I mean, LinkedIn is a long game. Yep. Um, but, uh, you know, so, so, and then again, like my advice would be to go back to don't just depend on LinkedIn alone, you yeah. know, for sure. Your personality can come out in emails and phone calls as well. Um, and uh, I think you'll convert you know, but I think, oh, who, Pat, Patty, Patty, Tawny Tango, did you want to talk? I could shut up. <laughs> I'd, I'd love to hear more from you, Amy. I just, I could listen to you all day. <laughs> Man. Oh, okay. I'll start singing some songs and we got 15 <laughs> minutes left. Let's do karaoke. <laughs> That's Francois' thing though. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We've never done a session on LinkedIn before. This is interesting. <laughs> That's why we're waiting for LinkedIn Live. Right. <laughs> no. uh, truthfully, truthfully though, Rosalind, I mean, seriously, you, you've got, you've got 10 plus years in merchanting, right? I mean, that's, you're new to NS8, but you are, you are a pro at merchant accounts. Like they're, that is such a goofy world and everybody hates it when they, when they need to set up a new merchant account mm -hmm. and everybody hates it when they lose a merchant account. And I can't tell you how many times I've been snubbed by a merchant bank, you know, increasing my reserve to hundred percent and then sending me a letter to tell me. And so five days of processing goes by and I just lost five days of sales revenue that I'll never see again. Yeah. And so we're talking about expensive, expensive, hard to handle pain points. And you know this. But I'm telling you, there's a lot of people that have my experience of losing a merchant account and like, you just need to be the go-to person. And I'm telling you, Dana, 
Dana Mantilla, she is like the queen of ID security and I love her posts. I, I've never bought from her before, but I probably will because I just love her posts all the time. Like they're so cute and funny. And, and you're talking points. about it with all of us too. So obviously it's impacted you. Yeah. No, like I'm just, you guys have a similar, you guys have a similar um, industry in that it's security, it's fraudulent, you know, it's like all that stuff. She, she's even invented characters that are hilarious. Like Mr. Creepy, she, Mr. Creepy keeps popping in to, to hack your personal ID and it like impacted me. You could do that with what you're doing because every business owner hates dealing with the merchant account crap. I am yeah. totally stealing Mr. Creepy. I love oh. that. It, it's like, awesome. <laughs> it like makes me think of South Park. I don't know why. Yes, it kind of does. You could see like a little Mr. Creepy, like oh, uh, head or something. Here's just an idea, uh, Rosalind. I mean, I, I started doing these videos in January um, and wanted to work on my personal brand, and I called it Tuesday Tips. And I was interviewing business owners, leaders, and um, like I, I don't post a lot of just myself in video. I find when you're having a conversation, it's a little bit more interesting. And I'm just listening to Todd. I'm like, why don't you get Todd on and just ask Todd about his terrible experience? It's like a free advert. There's hundreds of Todds out there. So do right. your, do your, you know, wacko Wednesdays or whatever the heck you want to call them. Your, your whatever rhymes with creepy. Um, but like, <laughs> like find people out there who are willing to tell their their story. And they're basically like explaining why they need what you offer. You don't even need to talk about your company. Like eventually right. people are going to be like, I don't know, every Friday um, I hear this story and Rosalind brings somebody on who just talks about all these pain points um, and how they got solved. And so it's kind of like that latent advertising versus the, you know, the billboard that says, hey, you know, we stopped the, what did you call them? The freaky, what was the creeper term you used, Todd? Mr. Oh, Mr. 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 Creepy. Creepy. Yeah. <laughs> They're everywhere. It's so, you, like it's what's... nothing, I I don't think I could ever get away with having a Mr. Creepy in my, in my videos, but like she nails it and it's absolutely hilarious. Like she'll have her kids like dress up as Mr. Creepy and like run to like steal her <laughs> mail out of her mailbox because there's someone taking your, your COVID check. You know what I mean? It's like, it's hilarious stuff. And they're simple <laughs> 45 second to minute and a half little blurbs, but she does such a cute job with them. She just, I think that with your industry, people would resonate with that whether they have a merchant account or not. And, and it's one of those questions that like most people don't know how merchant banking works and it's, it's a nightmare. And those that do understand it, they just hate it. And, and it's like, okay, I finally got one. Well, I, I honestly had a business where uh, one of my clients had over 300 different merchant accounts because the game was so stupid to play that they set up, all these shell entities. Anyway, I won't get into the details, but it's like there's games to play in the merchanting world and you protect so much of that. I think you've got an amazing product if it actually does what it does. Yeah, oh, it does. <laughs> and, you know, on to, to Todd's point and, um, and uh, our Francois's point, like bringing someone on like Todd, like, uh, you know, ego is a big thing. Like we, everyone likes to talk and be heard. And so one of the things that I actually want to do is to tap into um, and, and actually interview like CISOs and, you know, security network engineers and guys like that, that are in the trenches doing the jobs. And um, I might not be able to do it in necessarily in my territory because I'm trying to sell them something, but I want to do that because um, they, they're, they're going to love to talk about their technical topic. And so doing that and having like a Todd or someone on that either you've worked with before or you know has experienced this this pain point this problem um is great because and, and they're and they're going to want to talk so if you get a customer one of the things that you can do and i think kevin dorsey was talking about this go back and interview all your customers um and so if you have like a list of current customers see if they would be willing to do a survey and you, you take that, you know, all that gold that they give you there and turn that into content or see if they'd be willing to, you know, go on record and just talk about like the problems they had before and how the solution solved it for them. Yeah, um, and even what problems still exist. I mean, you know, that's a great way to kind of build out like that customer success side of the business. And 
uh, see if you can, you can help them in it, you know, in an additional way. But um, I think that's, that's a, that's a big component of it too. If you have friends in the industry that can hook you up and go on camera or just give you quotes or anything like that, that's going to lend credibility to you. And um, I mean, people like to talk. So, you know, if you can get them to talk, then let them sell the product for you in, in a lot of ways. Yeah. yeah. And if you're on a good call with somebody or a prospect, whoever, and you're talking about it and you guys just have a good back and forth going, don't be afraid to say, Hey, especially if you're on a zoom, say, Hey, can we hit record, hit record. And I did that on a, on one of my last calls and we were talking about something really cool and we're like, let's just do it. So we hit record. We talked for like two minutes and then we didn't edit it at all. We just threw it up on LinkedIn and it was well received. So just those natural back and forth conversations or um, somebody else, and I'm forgetting who now, but it, had, it wasn't my original idea, um, was just to record yourself throughout the day and, and while you're talking to clients. So you're not getting the other side, but record yourself. And then that's going to be helpful in a lot of ways to hear Jeez. kind of what you're saying. Yeah. And also you Jeez. could use the content. Baby, baby. Yeah, I think yeah. it's James Thornburg, like hashtag 27 seconds or something. Oh, I don't know. It wasn't, it was a girl that, that oh. recommended it. I can't remember. Oh my gosh, I can't remember. Gary v has got people recording him at all times just in case he says something brilliant. Something right, genius. and then you can cut just it Just in case. <laughs> yeah, you get like 30 minutes of recording or throughout the day maybe and you find a 30 second snippet, perfect. Throw it up on LinkedIn, put like a scroll stopper, first line that's like boom in your face. It's going to up appeal to certain people you know but you're not doing that every single day because your self-promotion is really supposed to be what like 15 20 percent so i mean it, it doesn't have to be like that all the time but when you do it just boom you know and the, the people that need to see it as long as you're connecting with the right people and you're you know you're filling your linkedin with those those people you're going to be good cool get your kid to follow you around with like your iphone camera yeah It'll just be like his forehead or like one <laughs> eye. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. The other great thing, Rosalind, is, uh, you know, although you're coming on now, which is, you know, obviously a great first step, like you're, you're open to just taking feedback from six strangers. Um, most of us have kept in touch with a lot of people that have come on. So it's not like this is the end of the road. Like you can, you can reach out to us and say, hey, here's maybe like a different approach. Uh, you know, how's this look? Um, and I've already put Todd on the spot. Maybe he's willing to get on a, a call with you or you get on a call with him or so, you know, like the, the point the of this is voice. like you come out of this and you go, man, like I have all these ideas and, um, you know, you don't feel like we beat down on you, right? Like you should, hopefully you feel. No, like, no, this was totally ideas. positive. Totally positive. Right. I'm totally open to open constructive criticism and help. That's why I wanted to do this. Um, I've never been one that I know everything because I know I don't. Um, and I'm, I love learning and, and being the best version of myself. So I appreciate all of this. I'm going to go and fix my LinkedIn as soon as we hang up here. I'm going to fix my about me. I put a little bit more information about how I can help. And um, yeah, Todd, I definitely want to talk more with you about, you know, some of the Pain points that you experienced and, and that know, industry collab sucks. or something. <laughs> it Talk about what made you get industry. into it. Oh, sorry. What's, what's I'm just it? saying for your about me. Talk about what made you get into it. Like if yeah. you had a love for something when you were five, you know, or whenever, if 17, 25, who cares? Like if you have a story that ties into why you are where you are today, which I'm sure you do. Talk about that a little bit, but keep everything concise and you and break it apart, make sure there's white space. And these are more logistical things, but just the, to the eye, people don't wanna see just like a huge long thing of text. They'll never read it. So, you know, start with something compelling and, and work your way through where you just give a little bit where you're, you're leaving this curiosity for people. Um, so being intentional about that to create that curiosity so people know what you do, but they're like, wait, I need to know more. Right, that's, and that, call to that's action, how I call to action. Be. Yeah. All the actions yeah. everywhere. Yeah. yeah and, you, and when you're done with your um, profile, um, just like ping us with it and we'll go yeah. on and take a look at it and give you some advice there. And if there's ideas for content or posts and, you know, oh, I'm not sure how, how does this sound? You know, um, I mean, we, we could tell you like all of the presenters that have come on. I mean, we stay in touch with all of them. 
Um, and it's just like, <laughs> I think like Patrick does a call like once a week with Gil and, you know, a lot of the guys have like pinged us and said like, how is this sound? Like one of them completely revamped his entire demo. Right. And then like sent us a video to show us like what he had changed. So like by all means, I think everyone on here would agree that we're hundred percent open for continuing to give you advice and, you know, help right. you in any way we can. So I appreciate and that. Amy's Thank really you. good at the sultry uh, pictures for your yeah. profile pic. Like, like if you want to do that, that uh, I'm going to get you. <laughs> <laughs> and, in, and in six months, uh, you'll, you'll get an email from Patrick. We're, we're always scheduling kind of like the, the bachelorette and we want to hear how things have gone. Um, and it'll be a little bit more emotional. Uh, we want to hear about like all these great things that have happened. <laughs> Like the Bachelorette, <laughs> or, or like Survivor. I, I don't know. Always awesome <laughs> after six months. I can honestly course. say I've never watched uh, any of that. I hate him. <laughs> There'll be a couch with like roses. <laughs> yeah. Do you? Accept? I ended up with number two guy, and the three guy, <laughs> and the fourth guy. We all ended up together on an oh island. God. <laughs> oh gosh, it's awesome. We get right. the advice <laughs> well uh we're, we're right up to the hour which is great i appreciate everybody like carving out a day uh their their, their days to, to help Me too and, and rosalind I, I like kudos to you for for you know coming out here complete strangers you didn't know what you were going to get um you still might not really know what, what you got because <laughs> it was all over the map but i, I think you got some yeah, yeah i took i took I some good notes I, here <laughs> i don't know that i'll ever get invited back again but it's been a pleasure <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right, everyone. Well, I, I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much for the feedback. Yeah, absolutely. So nice. Thanks for having me, everybody. Bye, you guys. Bye. 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 Bye.